Hey, thanks for joining us online this morning. Uh, we look forward to being together in person in a couple weeks. But for now, uh, we're celebrating online, and thank you for joining us. You know, every time I pull out my news app on my phone, the circumstances seem uh, even more dire. Uh, the, the, the COVID cases are rising right now. It's in California, and ICU space is critical, and we went through that in Lincoln. But, and, and you wonder, what do we do? in the face of these threats. We, we, we've never had these kind of issues before where we're running out of hospital space and people are dying. And, and how can we have any confidence in the face of threats? Well, I want to talk about that this morning. We're finishing our calendar year. It's a time we rethink about our lives. And I want to wrestle with the question, how can we face any threat with confidence? So if you've got a Bible, if you'd open that to Psalm 46, we're going to go all the way through this psalm Asking this question, how can we face any threat with confidence? So our passage starts this way in verse 1. It says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. This is a statement of confidence in God. He is trustworthy. He is a place of refuge. He is a place of sanctuary. So back when I was in elementary school, we would play tag on the playground. And uh, when I was it, everybody would get on the, the jungle gym and climb up to the top because they knew I was scared of heights. So they could go to this elevated place and, and be safe. They, they wouldn't be tagged because I wouldn't come get them. So what the psalmist is saying is, is God is that place we can go where we can't get tagged. Well, Andy, that's, that's a wonderful sentiment but why? <laughs> why would this psalmist say that? Well, uh, we'll start answering that question in, in verses two and three. Uh, therefore, he says, we will not fear. Now there's a, a derivation of, of the command God gives his people, do not be afraid, do not fear. That's his number one command. And here's the psalmist echoing that. He says, we will not fear. Though the earth should change, well, how much is going to change? And though the mountains slip into the heart of the sea. So we're talking about a storm so great that the mountains are, are shaking that, that they're slipping into the sea. Yeah, I'm wondering, what's your experience with the mountains? For me, I was going to training for my first job after I graduated from college and went from Texas to Colorado. Uh, I don't know if you've lived in Texas. I lived in uh, Houston and College Station. It's as flat as this stage. And so we're driving out, and we're on I-25, and if you've been up there, you get around Denver just a little bit north, you, you start to see the foothills. Man, I was amazed. So we had a week in Fort, Fort Collins, and then that Saturday, we went down to Boulder, and we went kind of a long way, so we went out to I-25, and we came in the diagonal and long line. And as you come in, there are the flat irons of Boulder staggering, overused word, awesome. We're not done. The next weekend, our little Texas group, one of the people in that, uh, her folks had a uh, condo in Frisco, or Breckenridge, Breckenridge. So we go down I-25, west on I-70, and then you go up 5,000 feet, and then you see the mountains in their grandeur. It's breathtaking, especially for somebody from Texas. Well, imagine all that slipping into the sea. That's quite a quake. But the psalmist is saying, even in that kind of shaking, we will not fear. He goes on, verse 3, though its waters roar at home, though the mountains quake at its swelling pride. In, in this case, the, the waters are coming up, that they're, the waves are overwhelming the mountains. He said, even in that, we will not fear. Why? Why would we not fear? Because God is in control of nature. You know, we're talking about the waters. Mountains going to the waters, waters come. God has shown throughout history he's control of the waters. He talked about a flood when it never rained in, in the book of Genesis, and it happened. The people of Israel, they, they were backed up against the Red Sea, and, and he just parted that thing. They went through, and when the Egyptians went through, he brought it back. 
They wanted to go to the promised land and the Jordan River was uh, at flood stage of Mount Wadi. He parted that. God is in control of nature, everything. See, we're, we're, we're wrestling with this question uh, we're, we're facing threats like we, we never thought. We've, we've had this COVID thing. We've got a contested election, and it, it goes on and on. And, 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 and how is it we can face any threat with confidence? According to the psalmist, we can do that because God is in control of nature. If he's in control of nature, what else does he not control? How can we face any threat with confidence? We can because God is in control of nature. So in verses seven, uh, he moves, the psalmist moves his focus from, from nature to, to nations, to political crisis. And, and here's what he says starting in verse four. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. Now the place of refuge is gonna be moved from God himself to the city of God. This is the place he inhabits. The holy dwelling places of the most high. God is in the midst of fear of her. She will not be moved. She, God will help her when morning dawns. And so this is a place of refuge, a city of refuge, and it's safe because God is there. Why do these people need safety? Well, verse six, the nations made an uproar. So there are nations, there, there are world powers that come up and they come on the scene and they are, are overwhelming. We think of the Greek empire, we think of the Persian empire, we think of the Roman empire. And, and these nations, they come and go and, and uh, verse six says, the kingdoms tottered. That's the kingdoms around them. It's kind of like, whoa, this one's coming and nobody can stop them. Except, second part of it, verse six, he raised his voice and the earth melted. These powerful nations, God spoke, and, and, and the ground before them, it, it just melted away. And at God's pleasure, they were gone. Why is that? Verse seven, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Hey, there, there's a, there's going to be political crisis that come and go. There's going to be nations that rise and nations that fall and this and that. And, and the psalmist is saying, God is in control of that. And, and we see to think that that nation, that force, that politician, that political party, that whatever is in control. No, God is. A little boy, maybe we were 10. I was 10 or 11. I had an older brother, four years older. We were up visiting... Um, an aunt of mine in, in Buffalo, New York, and we were out walking around, and I see, you know, you're gonna have to be a little older to remember this, uh, a sign, uh, kind of brown and, and yellow, it, it says fallout shelter. I said to my brother, what's that? He said, oh, those are places that are marked so when the Russians attack with nuclear weapons, we have a place to go. What? And it's the first time I heard of nuclear things and weapons, and yeah, they come, and then there's this, they, they, they put this cloud out, and it infects everybody, and I, I just thought in my little 10-year-old mind, where do, you, where do you go to escape this? See, that was a nation that was a threat, and, I, and for, for several nights, I wondered about what happens when they shoot the missile. Uh, fortunately, at 10 or 11 years old, the thought went away, but for three or four nights, it, 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 it controlled me. It was a political crisis that seemed unsolvable. And the psalmist is saying, don't go that way. Because there's a God who's in control. Uh, you know, back to, to verse six, this powerful nation, God speaks and the, 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 the ground below them melts away. So I'm curious, where are, are you looking for true Stability in the might of our nation, in the, in the might of our military? Uh, right now we're in a crisis about the election. It, is your understanding true stability will come when, when your party's in control of the, the Congress and the White House? And, and there's, there's going to be de facto instability if, if the other party or the other candidate or the other one is in control. If that's where you're living, God and the psalmist would like you to think again. Because true stability doesn't lie in a military, and I'm, I'm, for, I'm for a strong military. It doesn't lie in a candidate or it doesn't lie in a party. It lies in the Lord. 
See, we're, we're asking this question. We're living in a time of uh, threats we, we never thought we have. And, and we're, we're asking, how can we face any threat with confidence? Here's the deal. God controls nature and God controls nations. God's in, in complete control of this whole thing. And, and you can say, okay, Andy, what's the point then? Why, you know, he's, he's maybe giving us stuff we know and, and we've, we've acknowledged it. Here's the point. Verse eight. Come, behold the works of the Lord who has wrought desolations in the earth. He's saying, behold, take notice of, fix yourself on what? The works of the Lord, not what's going on out there, not what's going on on the TV, not what you see on the internet, not what you read on the, no, 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 no. Behold the works of the Lord. Focus on them, marvel in them, think about them. So you'll understand that there's no threat that is beyond God. So here's a little uh, disclosure. Some of you know I'm a, University of Michigan football fan. And I'll be at my office working on a sermon. I'll need a little break. And, and you know what I'll do? I will get on YouTube and I will look at past highlights. Now, there's nothing in the present. They're not very good in the present. But I will look at past highlights where, where they have been good. And I will look at a game that I have watched at three or four times just because it's fun to see them, them win. Well, Andy, why are you doing this? You already know the result. Because I just want to bask in it again. I just want to think about it again. I just want to see it again. This is what the psalmist is asking us to do. I want you to bask in it. I want you to think it. I want you to roll around in what? The works of the Lord. Why? Because if you'll do that, you'll get the picture. The stability isn't in this, that, or the other out there. It's in him. As we start this year, where's your focus? Where's my focus? What are, what are we reveling in? What are we basking in? What's consuming us? God? Or something going on out there? And I'm not saying we're, we're ignorant that we put our hand, head in the sand. I'm not saying that at all. Let's look at that stuff. Let's be honest with that stuff. But let's look at it in view of who God is. So verse 9. Another call to think about our focus. Here we go. He makes wars to cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot with fire. God is in control of, of these armies. And, and when he decides it's done, it's done. The war, it's over. He takes the instruments at his will and his whim, and, and he burns them and he breaks them, and he, and he says no more. And yet we, we get consumed with what's going on out there. 1979, Russia marched into Afghanistan. And so President Jimmy Carter brought conscription back. That means young men, 19 years old, had to register with the Selective Service. Now, that, after the Vietnam War, that had been done away with. And so, man, I, I, I cannot tell you the panic that set off. We're going to war. We're going to invade Afghanistan. You, you sign up. You're, you're going. The draft's coming. Well, well the, we're at 2020. The draft hasn't come yet. Russians have gone and left Afghanistan. We didn't go in. But there were folks who, who got so caught up in the news and they started jumping to conclusions and worrying and this and stuff and, and, and none of it ever came true. Yeah, do we need to notice what's going on? Absolutely. But we need to look at that in light of the one who says, I am in control, complete control. I bring desolations, I break, and I burn the, the instruments of war. It's to him. We need to put these threats against the backdrop of God. So, so Andy, you're going to say that, okay, yeah, you got this God. He's controlling nations. He's controlling nations. Then why is this stuff happening? By the way, there's a pandemic. Andy, there's a pandemic going on, 200,000 plus and more, and, and, and there's crisis going on, and our, our nation's at a crisis about the election, and there's stuff overseas, and there's... Why? Here's my question. Ultimately, I, I don't know why he allows some things, and who knows what he, he doesn't allow. But I will say this. The, the crisis of the world draws back to him. 
They make us realize we're not in control. Let me give you two examples. I'll be honest. When I heard about this coronavirus back in the beginning of this year, January, February, I thought, yeah, yeah, it's serious, but it doesn't affect us. We, we in the U.S., we've got this figured out. I mean, there's been MERS, there's been SARS, and the rest of the world's been affected, but not us. We'll, we'll figure it out. We, us, we're in control. This has busted that notion, at least for me. We're not in control. And, and, and God, in his goodness, redeems these crises and, and draws people to himself. And I want to say the 60 or 80 or 90 years we have are important. But in light of eternity, God speaks in these crises. One more. My parents grew up in the Depression. Uh, my dad told me how bad it was. But I was relieved that we had put economic systems in place that this would never happen again. And I remember in the middle to late 90, 1990s, I remember a news story that said, Do we, have we developed the first recession-proof economy? Well, 2006 through 2008 and 2009, I proved that differently. We didn't have enough policies to avert this crisis. And, and we came real close going into depression uh, as a nation. My, 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 my point is, uh, I was reminded again, my well-being, my family's well-being, economic stability, it, it's in God. It's not in an economy. And a couple of these crises have kind of slapped me in the face. And, and if it happened with me, it, it may be happening with others. Ultimately, I don't know why God allows these things, some and not others. But I do know he redeems these crises to bring us back to, I am the source. I am the one of stability. Not your economy, not your military, not your government, not your popularity, not your job, not your spouse, not your boyfriend, me. And so there is this constant bringing us back. And so the psalmist does that again in verse 10. He's calling uh, for us to reprioritize. Here's what he says, cease striving. Man, we're, do we're doing, we're doing, doing, doing. To create stability. And God says, oh, I'm not saying don't do anything, but, but first, calm yourself. Settle down and folks, cease striving and know that I am God. I'm in control. And all this stuff going on in the world, I, second part of verse 10, I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. And then in verse 11, he repeats again what we saw in verse 7. The Lord of hosts, that's the Lord of the armies. He's with us. He, he can bring a legion of angels at that. The God of our Jacob, that is our stronghold. So we're about to turn the page on 2020 and we're going into 2021. Here's what I want you and I to think about. What's our stronghold? We're hoping 2021 will be a year of stability. What's our foundation? What are we betting on to give us that stability? I'm hoping it's God. I'm hoping it's not a person or a party, political party or an economy, or a, or a vaccine, or this or that. Those are all things to consider, but, but ultimately, a foundation. What are we counting on to give us stability? You know, I, perhaps God proved himself no more that at the crucifixion of Jesus, the, the, the world power on the scene, Rome, had decided Jesus was to be done away with, and working with the Jews, they had a mockery of a trial. They executed him. They put him in a tomb and, and they roll this big stone over the tomb and then they put the Roman seal on it and then they put a, a, a platoon of soldiers in front to guard it. And they thought, that's safe, we can put him away, we'll keep him there. And we've certified that he's dead. And that lasted from Friday night till Sunday morning. And God said, no, that's, that's not the way it's gonna end and Jesus rose from the dead. This is the one who's in complete control. And because of this God who controls nature and the nations, we can have that confidence. But here's what I want to ask. Between now and January 1, would you read Psalm 46 each day? With this prayer, 
God, would you move my ultimate confidence to you? Would, would you give me the stability of knowing that since you control nature and you control nations, you can be trusted with anything? I don't know what's going to happen in 2021. I really don't. But I know God's still going to be there. And he's a place of stability. Would you take this next week, or more if you choose, to reflect on Psalm 46? Think it through. That as we approach the new, new year, you, you, you might have your, your focus right. Uh, again, the psalmist is calling us back to prioritize, to look at God. Would you do that? So once in a while on Facebook, I, I love these um, videos that show the, the animal world, animal kingdom, and they'll show some animal stalking another. Well, in this one, some lions were stalking this, this baby rhinoceros, and they saw a meal there, and, and they got up, and, and the mama rhino, I guess she wasn't paying attention or didn't hear the lions, and, and so they, they, they jumped this little baby rhino, and of course the rhino calls out, and the mama turns, and she takes two steps, and the lions think, yeah, we're out. We're gone. All this planning, all this hunt, all this conniving stopped when the big old mama rhino showed up. That's a little bit of a picture of what goes on in our world. The forces of evil, they come and they, they threaten us and their stuff and it, it wrecks our stability and it takes away and this and then God shows up and they're done. Yeah, I'm praying and hoping that we're putting our confidence in this God. It allows us to face any threat because he controls both nature and the nations. Let me pray. Our Father in heaven, we are grateful that you are in control. And forgive us to the degree we have put our focus someplace else. We have beheld something other than you. You say, behold uh, he makes nations to cease. Behold, he brings the desolation. Behold, he breaks the instruments of war and burns them. Behold this God. Lord Jesus, that we would behold you ultimately and that would give us the confidence to face any threat. And I pray this in Christ's name. Amen.